Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to do something that I've done a couple of times before but that I haven't done in a while. We are going to talk about a couple of weird online communities. Now I know I used to do Tumblr deep dives on strange communities and frankly I feel like I've talked about every community that I can talk about that isn't extremely explicit and that YouTube would probably either take down or age restrict and also I don't want to be showing explicit images images here, obviously. If you find a weird community on Tumblr that I haven't talked about yet that you want me to talk about, by all means send it my way. But today we're going to do something kind of similar. We're going to talk about three strange and some kind of scary, honestly, online communities that I found. I did throw in one that is more lighthearted just to give us a bit of respite from the other two. So on to these communities. So the first community we're going to talk about is rather a harrowing concept, frankly, and it very much gave me the toxic side of the true crime community vibes. And the toxic side of the true crime community, as you guys know, I've discussed it multiple times, are the people who look up to serial killers or think serial killers are hot or think they could have fixed them or think that they relate to them. The people that are like that, basically defending serial killers. It gave me very much that type of vibe. So hold on to your wigs because it's not pretty. Cute dead guys. There's a cute dead guys community. No, God! No, God, please! You can find pictures there of people who died hanging themselves, who were murdered, just like a series of different versions, like dead guys in the morgue. And unfortunately, I had to find this out because I had to confirm whether it was true by going to the actual website, I strongly suggest not checking, honestly. And the interesting thing is when you go on that website, don't worry, I'm not gonna show anything gory. The interesting thing is when you go on that website, there are personal ads, which frankly scares me a little bit. It gives me too, like I've seen too many true crime cases where cannibals do this type of shit, where they meet up and eat one another or one of each other. It, too much. And needless to say, cute dead guys, these are people who think that dead bodies are attractive and a large amount of these people I think we can surmise are necrophiliacs, as in people who want to engage in coitus with dead bodies. I don't know how much more I have to say about that, aside from the fact that it's extremely alarming. But apart from that, there are categories of images like death images, crime and death videos, disasters. And then there's probably the least creepy thing on this website, which is dead guys in movies, like actors pretending to be dead, which is sad to say is probably the most comforting thing we're gonna find here. At the bottom, there's also sexual deviants where they mention necrophilia and also zoophilia. So this website seems to cater to a lot of philias because initially I thought it was just the kind of morbid curiosity, kind of like when people look up accident videos, which I don't understand doing that because I think it's traumatizing. But regardless, I thought that it was kind of like that, but then I understood that it was more necrophiliac kind of an audience. And then zoophiles are here too, which is also the conclusions you could come to with that are things I'm not comfortable with. So that was the first online community. I think now you understand why I needed to put a little bit of whimsical into the next community because this is truly harrowing. Okay, so the next community is Carpeteers. So apparently Hugh Dancy from Hannibal, put a picture of him here in case you recognize his face and don't know his name. Apparently he is a Carpeteer. Now, much like the name suggests, Carpeteers are people who review carpets, but not any carpet. I initially thought that it was people who were like fond of carpets or who were like reviewed or like collected carpets, but apparently carpeteering is actually, <laughs> is actually comprised of a map of earth with red dots that represent airports. The carpets that they review are solely airport carpets, apparently. So like this is a, like this is a version of like Yelp for 
airport carpets. And some of the reviews apparently are like cheeky or like they make a joke out of it. But some of the reviews are actually like serious, serious reviews. Like this is a life or death situation, which I thought was kind of funny compared to the first community I mentioned. And the next one I'm going to mention is completely harmless. But I thought that that was so interesting because it's so random. And it's something I never would have thought of, of like specifically airport carpets, mainly because when I think of airport carpets, they all look the same to me. Now, if we're talking about reviewing casino carpets in Vegas, there I have a lot to say because a lot of those carpets just two, two 70s and not like the good side of the 70s. Carpeteers out there, you guys should consider Las Vegas. I think you'd have a lot to talk about there. Let's go back into the abyss. This one is one of the ones that probably, instead of making me disgusted and afraid, like the first one, this is probably one of the ones that pisses me off the most because there are actual pro drunk driving advocate websites. They linked three and only one of them is still active. I'm assuming the others were taken down or who knows what happened. These are people who actually think that there's no problem with drunk driving and I'm going to specify exactly what I mean. So here on the article that I'm reading right now about crazy communities or whatever, apparently one of the websites had an essay in it in which the writer argues that drunk driving should be legal because being hit by a drunk driver and a sober driver feels the same. Now I had found another website just by Googling of someone who, or, or a group of people, I don't know how many people run the website. And basically there was a kid in a neighborhood that was hit by a drunk driver. And then an association began from that because the mother of the child was obviously very mad and they started an association called Mad Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And the person running this website has a bone to pick with them, which I don't really understand why you can't add one plus one equals two, like your kid dies because of a drunk driver, of course the parents are gonna want to get involved in the cause to have other parents or other people generally avoid the same fate. But this person basically said that the limit on alcohol is ridiculous. If you watch people in bars, well, you'll see that a lot of them will have more than one drink and they'll drive. And the, the kind of rationalizing of like other people are doing it, so it's fine kind of thing is happening there a lot. A lot of it touches on like freedom, which I think is kind of ridiculous because I mean, take a taxi, take an Uber. No one's stopping you from drinking yourself drunk or blacking out or whatever you want to do. No one's stopping you from doing that. It's just a question of public safety that you don't have to drive. So like, it's just funny that specifically the drunk driving advocacy community is taking it as such a personal attack where it's like, this rule goes for everyone and taking an Uber, taking a taxi, uh, taking public transport, whatever you need to do, it may cost you a few extra dollars depending on how far you're going. But at the same time, wouldn't you just rather relax after drinking and not have to worry about driving? We're gonna try and see it from their perspective. Wouldn't you rather relax? Wouldn't you rather just chill instead of putting other people at risk, potentially hitting and killing someone, potentially hitting something and you dying? You know, like there's so many things that could go wrong that I can't even imagine for one second trying to defend it considering there are no pros to drunk driving, absolutely none. I, they tell this anecdote of how like, they've driven plenty of times after having more than one drink and nothing happened. And it's like, okay, that doesn't mean nothing will ever happen. And I, I just think that kind of logic is flawed because it the implication is because nothing ever happened, nothing ever will happen. And that's just not accurate. And I think it gives the person a false sense of security. And then the person just becomes very comfortable driving under the influence to the point where they want to normalize it, which I think is what is going on with these people. But I think that that is by far one of the most despicable things, especially since in that same article, the person acknowledged that death and injury come from this, but they're like, but you know, whatever. Anyways, guys, you can let me know what you think about these communities. If there are other communities that are strange or kind of whimsical and funny that you've heard of, let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and I'll catch you guys next time.